Well, this is a um, just a small update, really. Um, oops. <laughs> it's a small update. It helps if I take the cap off the lens. <laughs> okay. So, um, this is the Crossfader project. Um, the amendment since last time. The steel 3mm rods. I think they were 3mm. Yeah, pretty sure. Rods that I had before, they've been replaced with knitting needles. Yeah, I know. They're 4mm. And they seem to have like a sort of a slippery slidey kind of coating to them. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And um, if you can see here, before where the crossfader knob is here, there was just the one block. Now there's an additional block added. Um, maybe later I'll move the crossfader to the middle of this. But um, as of as of now, I'm gonna try and twist it. As you can see, there's minimal play. You know, it's just really it's perfect actually. Um, it's been lubricated with some silicon. Uh, lubricant that we got uh, somewhere that I can't find right now. <clears throat> anyway, um, it's interesting because I spoke to my father and I was just like, "Hey, you know, you know," handed in my project and said, "This is what I'm working on. Do you have any ideas on how to, you know, or do you have anything, you know, whatever that can help me?" So we went to a hobby store, a hobby craft type of thing. We got there and it was closed. So I was like. Yeah, but it was a bit annoying. So, um, but anyway, I was walking around and my dad had the idea of trying knitting needles. It didn't occur to me, but um, yeah, I mean, four millimeter diameter, I believe. Um, yeah, and um, without adding the secondary block to this part here, it had improved massively, but there was still some give in it. It was a bit irritating to me. It was. It was still too sloppy. Um, so I thought, you know what? I'll put another block the other side. Like that. And so that... Um, and they're facing away from each other. In case that matters. Um, because of the hole. Because on one side you have a hole like that. And then on the other side you have this like, nice little, little cutout. Without the countersinking and etc. So I just put them facing away from each other like this and it's given you know really great stability um, in this control it, you know the variation I can't I can't really get it to move you know I, I, without forcing it I can't really make it move very much out of out of alignment which is fantastic very very cool um, if you use the fader like this so um, you know like, you know, I can't describe it, but I guess you'll know what I mean. Um, then it's perfectly fine. And any normal DJ, you know, just doing regular DJing would be happy with that. Uh, for scratching, um, it'll be fine for transforms, which is basically this, on and off, on and off, on and off. It'll be fine for that. Um, I find that I like it mostly in hamster, which is backwards. And I find it much more comfortable, but... Um, yeah, it works fine, really, uh, like so. As you can probably tell, it'd be nice if it could stay in one place. That would help a lot. Um, it's loose enough that that it will move like that. Um, yeah, right now I'm actually very happy, almost almost completely happy with it. Um, just needs a little bit more work though, that's the only thing. Um, but once I get it down tight, that'd be cool. Okay, I'm going to need to... Um, I figured I'd hold it down because when I paused the camera and then held this down by hand, um, once it was stable, then the fader felt really, really good. So... Um, I'm just going to try and demo that a little bit if I can.
Now, um, I keep umming and ahhing over this because part of the timing for me um, is that I rely on the time it takes for the crossfader to move almost completely to the other channel and then back again. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but just that feeling, I don't know. It, um, so on the one hand, I possibly would like slightly longer run between there and there. But then on the other hand, I kind of like that small range. Just feels just feels about right for me as well. It's, I might get used to that. I quite like it. So, so there's the update on the mechanics. So mechanics are spot on. Um, I can't see any problem with that now. Um, when I get some time, I'll uh, work on the, the electronic side more. Um, I may even get rid of the mi the microcontroller. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, but I quite like having it there to give me an option on um, tweaking the sensor there. Um, but also, I would be able to do things like MIDI out, etc., etc. So that could be useful. But you know, I won't know until. Um, Sorry, a bit of hot snot. Hot glue is amazing. Um, yeah, I don't know until... Um, I think when I... When I get this down, you know, right, I'm very happy with this. Um, once I have some kind of enclosure for it, um, something that looks neat, um, probably laser cut as well for the range of that switch. So that, um, yeah, it just looks nice. So it looks professional almost, you know. Um, once I've done that, and once I have the um, have it actually working in this nature, actually turning music on and off from a turntable, then I'll go ahead and, and I'll do that, I think. I'll be very happy. Uh, and then from there, sorry, I'm waffling a bit. My mind deviated a bit, wandered, because um, I need to pick up my turntable, actually. Um, yeah, once I've got all that, got the sound turning on and off like it should do, um, then I might make an up fader um, for this. But again, I haven't decided on what I'm going to do. I might order some new magnets as well for some testing, but we'll see. Um, but definitely, when I get the crossfader part working, and I want the audio cutting in and out, then I might add MIDI, because um, I think that'd be useful. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. But I hope you like the update and uh, blah 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 hopefully next time I upload a video about this I'll uh, be turning some uh, real music on and off that'd be nice wouldn't it <laughs>